You know, throughout my life, I have seen various different versions of basketball games. You know, NBA Ballers, NBA Street is probably one of the most popular ones. NBA Live, uh, Street Hoops. Hell, N1 had a basketball game back in the day. It was called N1 Street Ball. NBA Jam's another one. But I think out of all the basketball games I've seen throughout my life, not even I think, this is just a pure fact. The one that lasted the longest was NBA 2K. NBA 2K is a basketball simulation video game that was first released on November 11th of 1999. This series has seen so many different consoles throughout the years, the Dreamcast, the PS2, PS3, GameCube, PS4, like it's been around for damn near what, two and a half decades? And it's still the most popular basketball game to date. Like back in the early 2000s, I'll say all the games I named were competition for 2K because they were basketball games. but the biggest competition it had was NBA Live. Before 2K was like the big thing it is now, NBA Live was seen as the better option, or in another sense, the more popular option. See, Live first started in 1994, like five years before NBA 2K was released. So by the time 2K came around, NBA Live already had a significant reputation. A reputation that they carried with them into the 2000s. While 2K was still trying to make a name for themselves, Live was the biggest option up to like, what, 2008 or 9? In other words, NBA Live was 2K before 2K. Now on the 2K end, I think, well my introduction to 2K was was technically seven, but I didn't really start getting into it till like 2K9 or 10. Now around that time, that's when 2K started being live in the ratings, or at least positioning itself as the successor to the live series, or at least by the time they hit 2K11. Because when 2K11 came out, the NBA live series would disappear for the next four years, and we wouldn't see them again till Live 14, making NBA Live 10 their last release before returning in 2014. Now with all the competition out the way, 2K was left to soar, man. After that, we got 2K12, 13, 14 released on the next generation. 2K had solidified itself as not only the biggest, but the only basketball platform on consoles. By the time Live came back, they could not compete. NBA 2K was basically here to stay. And they released banger after banger. Like in between 2K11 to I want to say 17, 2K was on a roll. Now, the reason why I'm saying all this is because I need y'all to truly understand my frustration and confusion as to how 2K turned into this company that we see now. Like, I genuinely can't understand, well, I do understand, but I just don't believe that they've managed to garner this new reputation. Like, their reputation shifted between the days of 2K 14 to 17 to like 2K 21 to 24. See, the older company of 2K, they had their issues too, I'm not going to make it seem like the two Ks between, I don't know, 13 and 17 were perfect because they weren't. They each had their own issues. However, their reputation back then, they were still relatively reliable as a basketball simulator or just all around basketball game. Some of them weren't the best thing on earth when they first released. Some of them had issues that were fixed. Some of them had issues that stayed. But in comparison to now, they didn't have this reputation of this greedy, money-hungry company that does everything it can to take money from its players. I've talked previously about microtransactions in video games and my issue towards them. I think 2K probably has one of the worst microtransactions issues I have seen in video games. It's to the point where a lot of people stop playing these games. Like, I've met people who say, yeah, my cutoff was 18, or my cutoff was 22, my cutoff was 23. Me personally, Personally, my cutoff from 2K was 2K20. After 2K20, I stopped playing those games. I didn't buy a 2K for the next four years. I skipped 21, skipped 22, skipped 23. Hell, I skipped 24 for the majority of the time. I just recently bought it like last month because it was on sale for like 90% off. So I bought that bitch for $6. And I'm still kind of pissed. So between the four years of me being gone, it's weird to say that not only did they not change, but I think they've gotten worse. We're gonna talk about 2K as a whole in terms of the game series, but the main objective, the main target for this video is NBA 2K24. 
and the issues I've noticed playing NBA 2K24. Now, 2K24 was released late last year, and after it was released, or when I first found out it was released, I didn't really care. As I said, my cutoff was 2K20. I didn't really keep up with the series after that, and I didn't really have any interest in buying it, so I ignored it for the majority of the time it was out. It wasn't until like three, four weeks ago when I seen that it was on sale for $6 that I decided to buy it. Now, playing 2K24, I noticed something like damn near immediately immediately the shooting in this game is hard as shit i think this has to be some of the hardest shooting i've seen in 2k in a long time now even though i just started playing 2k24 a few weeks ago i did technically start 2k22 a few months before this the first 2k i played after coming back from four years was 2k22 so i ended up playing it for the last few months of his cycle until the server shut down which is also kind of somewhat the reason why i ended up buying this like a few months later because aside from the microtransactions i noticed in 2k22 i really liked the game i thought the gameplay was pretty fun the shooting was simple enough the dribbling seemed okay i liked the game i also bought it for my xbox one previous gen so i didn't have i didn't know the city was a thing it, they were doing this weird yacht style neighborhood thing in 22 it was weird but the courts were close together so i liked it so jumping from that immediately to 24 like three four months later it was somewhat night and day like the shooting in this game is really fucking bad like if you don't score a green you're not making it like the way it's styled even if you're wide open the way the shooting works is the green meter is at the very end of the meter you need to hit the very top in order for you to make a green. Now, the thing is, I feel like they replicated the shot meter system from 2K17, because 17 was the exact same way. If you didn't hit the very top of that meter, you weren't getting a green. However, in 17, there was still a chance of you making the shot even if it wasn't a green. In 2K24, it, no, you're not making that shit. You might get lucky here and there if it's not a green and you make it, but if it's not an absolute green, you're not hitting that shit. At least not during the game. Because you have to worry about the contested meter and shit too. Now, me, at first, when I started doing my career or my player, I thought it was me. You know, I'm like, all right, well, I'm a low level right now. I'm like level 70 or whatever. Let me wait till I level up and shit and maybe it'll be fixed. Eventually, I end up getting to like over... I'm currently overall 91 and I'm still having this fucking issue. My three point is maxed the fuck out. Two point is somewhat maxed out. And I'm still still having this fucking issue i mean it got easier as time went on and i got used to it but the green meter is still a problem now i've heard from people you know it's been suggested to me that if i turn off the shot meter it'll be easier for me to make some of my shots like it gives you a boost in percentage of making a green so you can try that if you want to and see if it helps but if you're using the shot meter man good luck the hell there have been times where i swear to god i hit the top of that meter even if I was contested and the green meter shortened, I swear to God, I hit the top of that meter and I would miss. And when I look at the feedback, the shot feedback, it say, oh, very late or contested by this much, whether it's a three pointer or a layup times where I feel like I should have made that shot or I greened it. I, it just didn't go in. It didn't happen. Maybe it's an example of me not understanding the functions of 2K because of how long I've been gone, but that shit just doesn't make sense to me. If it does function like games like 2K17 or 19 shot meter, the second you hit the top of that bar, it doesn't matter how low the green is, you're supposed to green. But if I'm contested or if someone's in front of me, period, does that green meter just disappear 100%? Like, even if you hit the top of it, it doesn't matter because since there's someone in front of you there is no green period so you're just shooting to shoot at that point i don't fucking understand it now when it comes to the dribbling the dribbling is a topic that i'm not gonna say i don't care 
as much about it as I do like the shooting or defense or anything else in general. But me personally, I've never really been like this dribble demigod as most people like to claim they are. Yeah, dribbling's never been my thing. You know, I can do a little left, right here and there, but I suck at it. So when it comes to dribbling in this game, I don't know if it's necessarily a skill issue or a technical issue, but probably a skill issue. But I didn't pay too, too much attention to it in this one in comparison to others. One thing I will say about the dribbling though, I, I have noticed, I don't know if this is just me, there's a bit of a balance issue between offense and defense. Like sometimes I feel like this game favors offense a lot more than they favor defense play. And that's kind of why I brought up the dribbling. Like if you're covering somebody, whether it's online, offline, but especially online and they have the ball, they'll like mix the fuck out of you. And there's not much you can really do. I've heard people say that it's probably like an animation issue. I don't think it's an animation issue or more so I don't understand animations as much as I think I do. But those ball handlers, man, they're no fucking joke. It's like I can lock someone down for a certain period of time, but the second they get past me, it's like it takes fucking forever for me to recover and get back to my man while he's either driving to the hoop or recovering to go back to my man after I got screened. Like the screenings in this game, it feels like you're hitting a brick wall. Like the screens in this game, it's like the Batman Arkham games. How he, you have to press triangle to counter your enemy's attack before they punch you in the face. If you don't counter it before it happens, you can't stop it. Like the game punishes you badly for getting screened. It's like you hit the person who's screening, you stumble, and while you're trying to get to the person who's running on either the left or the right, you can't fucking keep up. It literally feels like you hit your face on a brick wall. And I've tried comparing it to screens in older games like 2K15 or 12. They don't feel as brick faced as this one. Like, if you get screened in 2K15, yeah, it's effective, but you can recover quick enough to get back to the person who's driving. You can't really do that in this one. I mean, unless you have, like, you know, stamina and speed max the fuck out. But for me personally, it's difficult. And you know what? It's not just the person screening. It's, like, everyone in general. There's times where I feel like if you get caught up within a crowd or a bunch of players in, like, one position, I feel like I'm moving through a sea of walls it doesn't feel fluid there's times where i have to get past the person i'm screening the enemy opponent and sometimes my own teammates like everyone feels stiff like you can't freely move past people even if they're not screening without running into someone there have been so many times where I've ran into like my own teammate trying to stop the opponent and it's as if my own teammate was screening me. Like same thing on the offensive. If you have the ball and you're rushing to the hoop, if someone's in front of you, whether it's an enemy or a friendly, you're practically getting screened. You can't freely move past them. I don't know if that's just me tripping, but I think that's a genuine issue that the game has that should be fixed. All in all, I feel like there should be more balance between the defense and the offense. The catch up and lockdown mechanics should be just as important as the dribbling and driving mechanics. Fighting chances on both ends should be matched is what I'm trying to say. Now on to the next issue, the city. Now, NBA 2K24 is the first 2K I've played on next generation consoles. Every 2K I've ever played has been either on PS3, Xbox One or PS4. Now, with my career, it started off with park. You have a park full of different basketball courts that you and other players can play in. Then park turned into neighborhood. Neighborhood was like an expanded version of park. You had a lot of different basketball courts you can play in, but there was a wider space. Now, neighborhood was a lot more immersive than park. Now you have barber shops, tattoo shops, there's apartment buildings surrounding the court. There was my court, which in games like 2K20 was stylized as your very own apartment that you can walk into with your friends and play your own games of basketball or just shoot around. So come to find out, the whole idea of park and neighborhood were basically erased and replaced with city in 2K21 next generation version. Meaning if you had a PS5 and you bought the latest version of 2K for the PS5, rather than having neighborhood, you would get the city, which is this 
wide fucking map filled with different basketball courts, shops, and whatever the fuck you can think of. Now, as I said, I didn't know this because when I came back, my I played 2K22 the last couple months that it was around, but I played the previous generation version. On um, 2K22, the previous gen, it's still kind of like neighborhood, but it was weird. You had a bunch of basketball courts on a yacht, and my court was still a thing, but it was all still neighborhood styled. D hell, even 2K24, the old gen version, still has this weird neighborhood style of basketball courts, but instead of a yacht like 22 did, now it's castle themed, and my court, once again, is still a thing. But once you jump to the new gen version, now you have city. And I think is completely fucking pointless. Everything is so far apart. They have basketball courts on the beach, inside the city, on the opposite side of the city. Everywhere you want to go, you need to take either your hoverboard, buy a BMX, which is like 75,000 VC, a fucking mini bike, a NASCAR car, or you can just take the subway from one point of the city to others. The only place in city that is styled like neighborhood where they do have a bunch of courts in certain areas is Elite and Rise. Those are the affiliation sides of the city. But even then, they're still so far fucking separated from each other that if you want to go from Rise to Elite, you can either take the subway in between or hop on a hoverboard. Or you can just run for like two minutes but whatever i don't know whose idea it was to add city in the game i just i just i don't it doesn't make sense the, also the worst thing about city rather than having my court on it like previous 2ks did apparently now they replace it with the gatorade facility where now rather than having your own court that you and your friends can play on it's like you rent out a court inside the gatorade facility alongside other people and you and your friends can play there which for me personally i found a lot of lagging issues on the gatorade facility and i'm the only one on my wi-fi so it can't just be my internet connection it's so fucking glitchy and we i don't understand the purpose of taking out my court there's no logical reason the majority of the courts you find will be between elite and rise if you try looking for a basketball court in the city itself everything is so separated there's two basketball courts in the beach area they're not together by the way there's a couple basketball courts for like 2v2s inside the city itself around the arena and there's another basketball court like sunset and another sunset like basketball court away from everything else that isn't multiplayer it's offline so that by itself is just taking up space now there are other offline courts like the berkeley and art gyms but to me they're relatively the same shit they're both offline so you can't play against other players or your friends and you can't really use them whatever you want there's a certain time limit for each once you use it once you have to wait for the next in-game time cycle to use it again and speaking of city another thing i don't understand about it there's a lot of shops in the city that you can walk into, you know, like donut shops, coffee shops, they provide no fucking use. You can't order anything there. You can't sit down. It's not interactive. The only interactive part about it are the doors that you walk in and out of. There's no purpose for them to be there other than display. The majority of this city you can't really interact with. It's all just display. It's the basketball courts and arenas that you can really go into. Everything else is just a prop. And to make matters even weirder, there are, another thing about this game, there are side quests aside from the main missions that you played throughout the actual game and these side quests come in the forms of people people who are scattered around the city and at times the game forces you to interact with these people for example in the game i i thought that i had the option to change my jersey I realized that I went throughout so many games without being able to, and I figured, all right, fuck it, I want to change it. How do I earn my way to change jerseys? In this game, in order for you to unlock the option to change jerseys, there are three different side quests you need to do that are scattered around the city that involves fashion tips and magazine covers. So in order for me to unlock sports jerseys, for the basketball game I'm playing, 
I need to turn my practical Sims character into a male model. I swear to God, there is a quest, one of those fashion tip quests, where you have to change your attire, you know, like accessories and hairstyles and shit in the game in order for you to unlock the chance to get new attires. That's just one of the three objectives you need to do in order to change the jersey. I thought I was playing a basketball game, not Vogue Simulator. Me personally, I feel like they should get rid of city and go back to either park or neighborhood. I know a lot of people prefer park over neighborhood. A lot of people did not like neighborhood when it first came out. I feel I like neighborhood, you know, especially if it's done right. You keep all the basketball courts in one area and, you know, the area surrounding that big ass rectangle full of basketball courts could be shops and my court. Or better yet, ha instead of having multiple shops, why don't you just have like one big ass store or even one small store and then when you go to that store, all the different clothing items you can get are put into categories rather than making them their own shops. Rather than having Jordan, Nike, and fucking, uh, I don't know, and one in separate different places, why don't you just have one big store and when you go into the store, you have, okay, this is the Jordan section. This is the Nike section, and this is the swag section, and they all range between lowest to highest when it comes to VC prices. And then next to it, you'll have my court. So the majority of the place is just basketball courts, but you have the clothes stores on one end and my court on the next. I don't think people will complain, or at least I wouldn't. That's just me. I feel like I've gone on enough about the gameplay and the city. Wait a second. No. No, I did not. No, I fucking did not. One quick thing I want to talk about before I talk about my main issue with the game. I want to talk about badge regression. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. It's dumb as hell. You have all these badges to your disposal. And if you don't use one of them as much as you use the other one, it will regress. Meaning if you have corner specialists on Hall of Fame, if you don't shoot from the corner enough times, eventually it will slowly start to drop until eventually it goes from gold to silver back to bronze. If you're not constantly using that badge or if you don't have a perk attached to that badge to whereas it doesn't regress, it's going to regress. That's dumb as shit. You know, a lot of these issues I, I put on 2K24 because, I mean, shit, it's the current 2K, but, man, I've noticed a lot of issues throughout the 2K series. Even the older ones that people like to glorify, man. It, it, it's not all just 2K24, but, fuck, a lot of what I'm feeling is towards 2K24. Now, on to the main issue, the main fucking issue that everyone has with this game. The microtransactions, dog. It's so, it's it's so much. I'm trying to remember if it was this bad when I like really last played it when this game still had its servers on or when 20 had its servers on, but fuck, man, the VC sucks. This game truly is pay to play. The amount of VC it takes to get your character from an overall 60 to an overall 85 is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Let me actually physically show you. Now, I know I said overall 85, but once you get your first my player to overall 90, you're able to do this. You can pass overall 85 with your other creative characters. So let me show you with this one. For this one, to get from overall 60 to 90, you'd have to pay 255,000 VC. Now, if you don't have that amount of VC, you can just buy it. Now, the 200000 is like $50. The 75000 is $20. You would have to pay over like $60, $68 in order to really get your character from 60 to 90 The game itself, before the sale, cost $70. So now I'm basically paying $138 to not only play the game, but level up my character from overall 60 to 90 and in my opinion, if you buy the game, right, and you just go straight to like leveling up to 90 or 85, me personally, I try not to, but I get it. If you are an overall 60, you're not hitting shit in this game. That's literally the lowest overall in the entire game. I don't know any NBA player on the roster that's overall 60. You, you're literally the worst player in the league. You're not making any shots. You're not driving to that hoop because no one will let you both offline and online. You literally suck. The game is unplayable as an overall 60, so I understand why people, you know, level their shit up all the way up to 85 or 90, especially if you have the money, 
but nobody's trying to pay that shit. Like me, for my my player, I tried playing the game straight for at least an hour when I first got it. Shit was ass. I didn't hit nothing. All right, it was bad. So I use VC to go from 60 to around 70, 72. It cost me some money. I'll say I spent about like 20 some dollars, but fuck it, whatever. We'll, we'll see where this goes. I did slightly better, but I'm still ass. The only real way for you to truly enjoy this game is if you're at least an overall 80 or at least 75. And to make matters worse, the game doesn't really give you that great of an option when it comes to VC. If you want to play on like pro, it's like 1200, like 1000 to 1200 VC every game. As long as you win, of course. While everything else is so fucking expensive. If you want to get a bike to get to places faster, because you know the city is massive, you need 75,000 VC. If you're playing on like pro and you get between 1000 to 1200, Man, you can play as long as you want, like eight minute, 10 minute games. It's gonna take you forever to get that much money to even get a 75,000 VC bike. Or even leveling up your character. I think I read somewhere where it's like, you need to play at least 60 hours to 70 hours worth of this game in order for you to get from 60 to 85 or 90. Man, nobody's trying to play this game for that fucking long. People have lives. I'm not about to spend my entire life on this game just to get from 60 to 80. I'm not spending my entire fucking paycheck just to get from 60 to 90. I literally don't see a point in playing this game. Like, this game is so stingy with VC where it's like they practically push you to buy it. It's very predatory. You don't get shit off the games you win. You for sure don't get shit off the games you lose. I think the most VC you'll ever get in a game is if you win a game of like arena or pro-am outside of the actual sports game arenas i mean but even then you can only get so much the game's very stingy with the amount of vc that you get i think they should add new ways to get vc i think i take it back any up is technically the best way to get vc you know 5,000, 10,000 vcs but if you lose, you're still gambling with the amount of VC that you have. So it's a very double-edged sword kind of situation. But going back to what I was saying about adding new ways to get VC, I mean, shit, they could give you the option to get VC while you play offline. I mean, they might, they don't have to make it as much VC as you get online in comparison to offline, but they could give you the option. Like, if you play a regular NBA game and you raise the difficulty, kind of like the same way they do it on the My Career NBA games, you you get VC. If you play blacktop and you win, or even if you lose, you get VC. You, obviously, you're not going to get the same VC winning as you do losing, but they give you the opportunity to get VC offline so you can use the same in-game currency to level up your character online. I mean, shit, they do it in Tekken. Me, personally, I, I don't want to ramble too much about this game. There's still a lot more shit I want to say. You know, I wish they added more creation with blacktop, more creation, more variety, at least least there's times where i feel like i've been playing the same blacktop games for the past what few years between this one 20 19 17 they all kind of feel the same as time goes on i mean yeah they changed the actual image on the court but they never changed the setting we'll talk about that in another 2k video i'll do in the future i will say this there are a few good things about this game this game i think probably has the biggest roster i've seen in like a really fucking long time in like any basketball game or at least it can compete with the other basketball games with big rosters i'm telling you yo they have nba players and years worth of teams galore like everything between like 1964 to present day but in the past it would be like 1964 to 2002 1964 to like 2012 but they'll be very scarce with the amount of teams that they have throughout these years in this one it feels like they have damn near everyone i mean i noticed that they don't have a few people like my most notable was probably i'll say reggie miller i noticed that they didn't have him in this roster at all i noticed a lot of nba players or at least a handful didn't agree to have their likeness in the 2k games nonetheless the roster is huge so if that's what you're looking for you'll enjoy it. i think you might enjoy the offline section of 2k i will say the offline section of 2k24 did not get me as frustrated or mad as the online section they got mamba moments 
Eras, Black Top, and they have Black Top in every fucking game. But hey, Black Top's there. I think the most interesting out the bunch is Mamba moments because it's seven of Kobe's greatest moments throughout the NBA. And they're retold throughout seven different parts or more so seven different missions that you can play through. They each have their own objectives and they're styled in the same fashion that the NBA at the time was styled. And that kind of goes into the whole era mode. This game, there's a section that's broken off into like five different eras of the NBA. You know, the LeBron era, the Jordan era, the Kobe era each with its own categories of basketball players and basketball teams and basketball settings. I'll say if you're looking for offline play, I think Arrows is going to be the main thing that you really enjoy because being able to go back and play some of these games throughout that time and comparing them to the time that they actually try to replicate, I think they did a really good job at that. All in all, do I see myself playing 2Ks again and going back to buying them once every year? No, I don't. I think I'm going to go back into another four-year hibernation. Well, maybe unless it's on sale. Because as I said, this one, I bought it for $6. If the next one is like 5 or $6, I'll buy that shit too and I'll do a review on it for the YouTube channel. Other than that, man, I'm not fucking buying another 2K unless it's less than $10. I don't trust it anymore. I was fairly disappointed coming back to this one specifically, especially after being gone for so long. I think I'll probably just go into another four year hibernation and we'll see what 2K29 looks like. I was really fucking disappointed. I'm gonna spend the rest of my time probably playing like the older 2Ks or older basketball games in general. I mean, I don't, you don't have to buy the newest one every fucking year. I get that it's the newest one out. It's the only one out and there's no competition live is gone everything else is gone but like man listen i live's been gone for like what six years now i've done pretty good without i've never really felt pressured to buy the newest 2ks i don't really get people who do i don't know man the 2k community has this weird relationship with 2k games like they i get that it's the only one out they all say that it's the only one out it's the only options we have i get it but they have a very weird relationship with those games it's like the fucking like 2k25 all we've had were the covers the trailer hasn't even released yet and people have already pre-ordered that game i haven't seen one footage of gameplay from 2k25 people already got the pre-orders ready and 2k already have the prices ready and they haven't really given us any information i, I don't know man it's weird me personally to each its own Everyone's grown, everyone's able to do whatever they want with their funds, and, hey man, to each its own. Me personally, I don't see myself paying another 2K game any type of mine for like a while. Hey man, listen, that's all I got for y'all. I appreciate y'all watching this episode of Reggie TV. But in better basketball news, Celtics won the championship. You know what I mean? I guess that, that's pretty cheerful. 2024 ain't all bad, basketball wise, I mean. Nonetheless, I hope y'all enjoyed this episode of Reggie TV. I appreciate y'all for watching. I'll see y'all in the next one. Uh, I, who knows? Maybe the next one will be an NBA Street video. I don't know. I'm in the basketball mood. So we'll see what happens. Nonetheless, appreciate y'all. Thanks for watching. See y'all in the next one.